We have generated millions of website visitors to our website. That's a lot of people, but it wasn't always like this. Life marketing started with three people and a dream, a story I'm sure most small business owners can relate to. So how do we get from point A to point B? We use the same digital marketing strategies we provide for our clients, for ourselves. And for a lot of the clients we service today, a good portion of them are totally new to digital marketing. The world of digital marketing is so big that it can feel overwhelming if you don't know where to start. We understand because that's where we were in 2011. So that's why I'm creating this video on digital marketing for beginners to equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to get started and start seeing real growth just like we did. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. Today, I'm sharing my top eight strategies to implement if you are completely new to digital marketing. I'm gonna break it all down into actionable steps that you can start taking after this video. But before I dive in, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel for more digital marketing videos every single week. All right, so jumping in with strategy number one, create a buyer persona. I know this might not be the most exciting step, but it's important that it's your first step. Whether you're a brand new business or you've been around for some time and are just now starting to market online, you need to perform some research on your customers. Here are the kind of questions you need to answer about your customers. What are the demographics usually, like their age, gender, and location? Where do they spend the majority of their time online? Is it Instagram, LinkedIn, Google? Narrow it down. And this is a big one. What is their motivation in buying your product or service? Why do they want what you offer? The motivation can look like a goal they're trying to achieve or a pain point they're trying to solve. If you've watched our videos for any length of time, you've heard us talk about goals and pain points a lot on this channel, and it's because it matters. Let's say you sell yoga pants, for example. Are people buying your yoga pants because they like the cute prints? Or is it because they're 5'10", like me, and your yoga pants come in tall? sizes. Knowing what motivates your audience to buy your product will help you know what kind of language, visuals, and approach to take with how you speak to them in your marketing. Let's look at a service-based business as another example. Let's say you own a mechanic shop and you work on cars for people. Some of the pain points you are solving for people probably include saving them time by not having to do it themselves and relieving their stress by allowing them to put their car in the hands of a professional to be fixed without having to learn how to do it themselves. Now, with both of those examples in mind, does the idea of leading with, we got six awards in 2021, sound like the right way to address any of those pain points or goals? No, it doesn't. Yet we see this so often, right? Where businesses run ads to a cold audience talking about how great they are when they should be addressing their audience by their wants and needs. So how do you do that? Invest the time and effort to make a solid buyer persona. Yes, people purchase products and services, but what they're really buying is a problem solver. The better you understand your audience, the more effective the rest of the strategies on this list will be. All right, strategy number two, social media marketing. This is what we're most known for as an agency as we've generated hundreds of thousands in revenue for our clients using social media marketing. So I'm going to start with this one. Some of the most popular social media platforms include Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Now we have a ton of videos going over different social media platforms, including some of the newer platforms that have popped up like Clubhouse. So I'll link a few of our social media marketing playlists in the description because I don't wanna spend time talking about each individual platform in this video. What I do wanna talk about is how you should use social media in general to leverage growth, especially when you're first starting out and answer some of the FAQs that we get around social media. So to start, which social media platform should you be on? The answer is whichever social media platform your audience is on. See how strategy number one is already coming in handy? If you did your customer research, you should already know which social media platform they're on. But for example, if you are a B2B company, you may have a little more luck on LinkedIn than Pinterest, given the demographics of both platforms. Now you might be thinking, what if my customer base spends time on two or three platforms pretty much equally? I would advise against trying to tackle multiple platforms platforms at one time unless you have the time and manpower to do it. Otherwise, I would suggest picking the platform with the biggest audience size of your customers and focus your efforts on mastering that platform before moving on to another. 
And when I say to focus on that platform, here are four CTAs you can take away for yourself. Number one, make a personal account for yourself on that platform if you don't have one already. This is not for your business. This is solely for you to understand the app. Get a feel for what people post and talk about on that platform and understand from personal experience what the social media app is for. It will help you when it comes time to post for your business because you'll understand the general vibe of the app as well as what types of posts are typically best received. Number two, learn all of the features that platform offers. These apps are updating and offering new features all the time in competition with each other. For instance, the rise of TikTok caused Instagram to release Instagram Instagram Reels, which also led YouTube to release YouTube Shorts. So using the latest features is usually a good work around the algorithm so that you can get maximum reach and engagement on your posts, so stay on top of them. One great way to keep up with social media updates is by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Just saying. Number three, create a business account on the platform if you don't already have one and make sure it's optimized. Yes, this means filling out all of the basic information like your website URL, profile picture of your logo, etc. But it also includes things like adding keywords to your bio or about me section that are related to your business. Choose keywords that people might search. Now, social media platforms are not search engines outright like Google where people get on to ask a question or look for specific information necessarily, but they have started taking on search engine-like qualities where you can search plain keywords now, not just hashtags. So it can't hurt to optimize your account all the same. Number four, just about all social media platforms have basic built-in analytics for business accounts. Use them. Gauge to see which type of posts are performing best and which aren't. Use your insights to make an informed decision on where to pivot and where to continue with your social media strategy. The best part about social media for beginners is that everything I just described is free. All of that costs you nothing but time. That's why it's a great way to establish your brand and get some organic brand awareness going before we even get into advertising. So with that, next let's talk about strategy number three, advertising. Now here at Life, we break our advertising efforts down into two different services, social media advertising and Google advertising, also known as PPC, which stands for pay per click. So let's discuss the difference between the two really quickly. Social media advertising allows you to target people on social media by interest, behavior, and demographic, or by a pre-existing customer list that you can upload and use to retarget and find new customers. Google advertising allows you to target people by what they are searching on Google, and you can retarget your existing website traffic across thousands of websites across the web. So in order to decide which advertising strategy may be best for you to start out with, ask yourself this question. Is the product or service I offer something people would search for on Google? If so, Jot down a list of the search terms in the marketing world known as keywords that you think people would be searching for as it relates to your business. If not, still jot down a short list of things that people could possibly search. Now what I want you to do is use a free tool like Google Keyword Planner to see how many times those keywords are actually being searched on Google. You can also use paid tools like SEMrush or Keyword Tool to see how many times things are being searched on YouTube, get question ideas around them, and more. Now we have a whole playlist on PPC marketing that further dives into how to use these tools, which I'll link here and put in the description. But the point of those tools is to confirm whether or not you were right about your keyword list. Are people actually searching the keywords you thought of? And if so, what's the search volume? If not, social media advertising may be more suited for your business. The nature of certain businesses lend themselves more to Google and vice versa. For example, if you own an AC repair shop, we know that people are more likely to go to Google and type in AC repair near me when they need that service rather than hop on Facebook and wait around until they see an ad from an AC company. But in addition to the nature of your business, which advertising avenue you choose should also depend on your business goals. If you want more Facebook page likes, there's a Facebook ad campaign objective for that. As another example, I wouldn't suggest Google ads if your goal is to get more Instagram post engagement. Now, before we move on to the next strategy, my last CTA for you here with advertising has to do with the advertisements themselves. What should they look like? 
What should they say? Familiarizing yourself with the advertising platform you choose will partially help answer this question as there are different dimension sizes, video length limits, etc. for every different advertising placement. But the main thing I want to reiterate is that your ad should always be focused more on being helpful than salesy. Remember that people are more likely to click on an ad that directly answers a problem or goal they have than they are one that talks about your company accolades. And also, depending on which advertising channel you choose, you have to think about where people are at in their buyer's journey. Google is known for more high intent leads because people are actively searching for the product or service you provide, whereas social media is usually viewed as a more top of funnel approach. So just be sure that your ads meet them where they're at. We've drawn the comparison of the marketing funnel to relationships before on our channel, but to quickly summarize part of it, you wouldn't ask someone to marry you on your first date right? Same thing with your ads. Using closing verbiage and sales language on an ad that's being delivered to people who have never heard of your company or product before is not a strategy I would recommend. So adapt your ads based on who you are delivering them to. All right, now that we've discussed advertising, let's talk about one of the best media types for ads and strategy number four, video content. In video said, in 2020, 96% of consumers increased their online video consumption and and nine out of 10 viewers said they wanted to see more videos from brands and businesses. And as of 2021, an average person is predicted to spend 100 minutes per day watching online videos. They go on to say that by 2022, 82% of the global internet traffic will come from streaming videos and downloads. Now I've pointed all that out to simply say, your customers give their attention to video. We've seen it firsthand. Our YouTube channel has gained about 12,000 subscribers in just the last 10 months and it's still growing exponentially. So if you want to meet your audience where they spend their time, you need to produce content in the form of video. And don't get discouraged when I say that because it does not take a Hollywood budget to make a good video. People are doing it every day from their living rooms on their smartphones, right? so can you. I made a whole video on how you can make Instagram Reels, for example, which I'll link here and in the description, but it could be something as simple as that. So we know people are consuming videos and they're not expensive to make, but what happens after people watch your video? What are the benefits of it? NVIDIA said that 64% of consumers purchase a product after watching social videos created by brands and that video marketers get 66% more qualified leads per year. That's huge. And there are more statistics where those came from, but the bottom line is that people are watching videos and videos directly impact purchases. So if you're not already using video in your content, in your ads, or on YouTube, I'll link Sean video on video marketing in 2021 in the description for you so you can watch that next and get started. All right, moving on to strategy number five, SEO or search engine optimization. I'll link our playlist on all things SEO in the description as well, just because I want you guys to have quick access to all this info. But in short, SEO is the process that helps you rank higher on Google. When someone types in a search term or keyword into Google that is relevant to your business, SEO is what makes your website show up in the top search results. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, isn't that what you said about Google Ads? Yes, it is. So let me explain the difference. With PPC, you directly pay Google to place your ad in those top spots. With SEO, you're implementing organic, unpaid processes to try and earn your top spot there without paying Google directly for it. So when you're looking at the search results on Google, all of the top results that have the ad symbol next to it are the result of PPC, and the results below that that do not have an ad symbol are the result of SEO. There are pros and cons to both strategies, so you'll just need to pick the one that makes the most sense for your business. Let me list out a couple of the pros and cons just to give you a better idea. PPC drives almost instant clicks and results since you're paying Google directly for them, whereas SEO is a long-term strategy that can sometimes take 12 months or more to really work. But all SEO costs is time and effort. Another point is PPC will only work for as long as you're paying Google, which can get pricey fast 
fast and be hard to sustain for months on end. SEO, however, can continue to drive waves of high quality traffic for you for years with minimal adjusting and optimization over time. For example, at the beginning of this video, when I shared that we've generated millions of website visitors, you can see that the majority of it came from organic Google searches. That's SEO. So we find that a lot of our clients use PPC as a short-term strategy to start getting some immediate traffic in while they get their long-term SEO game plan started. So that begs the question, how do you get your SEO game plan started? To fully answer that question, I would suggest looking at some of the SEO videos from our playlist that I mentioned earlier, because Google looks at hundreds of ranking factors to determine which websites to rank higher. And as a result, there are tons of things you can do on your end to try and optimize for those ranking factors, like on-page SEO, off-page SEO, acquiring backlinks, etc. And our SEO playlist goes more in depth on each of those strategies. But one component of SEO that I do wanna spend some time talking about in particular as its own strategy is strategy number six, content marketing. The Content Marketing Institute says content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. So a great example of this is a blog. If you have a blog, you can provide valuable information to your audience in the form of long form content without directly selling to them. So why is this important? Well, you have to think about the nature of our world and today's buyers. There's an abundance of information available for consumers to compare you with your competitors and do extensive research on any product or service. People have the luxury of researching on their own before buying. So you want to be the one that provides them with the best information and the most value without jumping straight into your sales content. People don't want to be sold to anymore. And with the amount of info at their fingertips, they don't have to be. It goes back to what we talked about earlier. You need to provide value in the form of tackling their pain points and achieving their goals because that's what people are searching for online, right? So the first part of content marketing is to help your audience and draw them into your brand with free, valuable content. The second part of content marketing is to write with both your audience and Google in mind. Remember a few minutes ago, I said this strategy would be a component of SEO, right? Here's how. One of the ranking factors Google looks at for SEO is keyword volume, meaning if someone searches for social media marketing agency and we do not have those words on our website anywhere at all, Google probably is not gonna rank us for that keyword. So when you blog, pick a topic that doubles as a highly searched keyword. You don't wanna just pick topics that sound good to you. If there's any piece of advice that you take away from this video today, it is to back up all of your decision-making with data and research. Go back to the keyword research tools I shared earlier to understand what your audience is actually looking for and has questions about, and then answer those questions in the form of a blog packed with relevant keywords and information. If you perform content marketing this way, you'll kill two birds with one stone because you'll be helping your SEO efforts while also encouraging your audience further down your marketing funnel with valuable information that they want. All right, moving on to strategy number seven, email marketing. MailChimp defines email marketing as a form of digital marketing that uses email to promote your business's products or services. It can help make your customers aware of your latest items or offers by integrating it into your marketing automation efforts. It can also play a pivotal role in your marketing strategy with lead generation, brand awareness, building relationships, or keeping customers engaged between purchases through different types of marketing emails. Now, I put that full quote in here because it really does sum up email marketing pretty well. You can use email marketing to send emails like these. Send an automated welcome email to every new subscriber and or customer. Send automated confirmation emails whenever somebody makes a purchase or schedules a call or service. Send weekly newsletters with valuable information or updates. And create a drip sequence of emails 
emails that send to subscribers based on certain actions your subscribers have or have not taken. Now we have an email marketing playlist that goes over what some of the best softwares are to get your email marketing started, as well as tips for effective email marketing in 2021 that I will link here and in the description. But for the sake of this video, I wanna stress the point that email marketing should be treated as a means to bridge the gap between where your customers are and where you want them to go next in your sales funnel. It is meant for nurturing your leads and existing customers. And if you're doing it right, you should start to see a good return from it because for every $1 spent on email marketing, the average return is $42. For instance, we generated over 12,000 in revenue for one of our clients via email marketing. Now, if you're watching this thinking, I don't have any email subscribers. Then you need to back it up to the advertising strategy and start running some campaigns to gather leads. Email marketing does not help you acquire email addresses. Email marketing is for when you already have a list of email addresses that you can then send emails to. All right, moving on to my last strategy, strategy number eight, podcasts. SEMrush says 2021 holds the record for hours spent listening to podcasts with 15 billion hours compared to 12 billion just two years ago. So if you're trying to find the platform where your audience spends most of their time, this might be it. And before you get discouraged thinking about how much time, effort, and money creating a podcast would be, it doesn't have to cost so much. We just started repurposing our YouTube videos in the form of podcasts this year and just recently hit our 100th episode. You can use softwares like Buzzsprout for just a few dollars a month to mass publish on platforms like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and others. If you don't have content you can repurpose for podcasts yet, you could also start by reaching out to others who have an existing podcast platform to see if they would be interested in having you on to be interviewed. Just because you don't have a huge base of podcast listeners yet, doesn't mean you don't have value and knowledge to bring to the table. So that's another way you could get your start is by getting featured on other people's podcasts that are relevant within your field. All right, so those are all good strategies, right? But which one do you start with first if you don't have the manpower and time to execute all of them simultaneously? To answer that, you must first ask yourself these questions. Number one, where does my audience spend the most time? Number two, which platform lends itself better to the nature of my business, like B2B or B2C? And number three, which platform makes the most sense for my business model? After you narrow it down, focus your efforts into perfecting a strategy for that one platform and then move on to the next strategy. The beginning of digital marketing is exciting because you're just barely scratching the surface on the explosive growth your business could see. So comment below and let me know which strategy you want to try next and let me know if you have any questions about it. Otherwise, like this video for more digital marketing videos every single week, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.